So charging clients by the hour as a freelance web developer seems like a pretty common approach. It seems practical in the beginning. You're trying to make a certain hourly wage. Why not just pass that cost to your client and then make that your hourly wage? So this seems like a common approach, but I'm personally not a big fan of it. From my experience, I found different alternatives that work better. And there's a few reasons to why I really don't like this approach. So the first thing is, uh, you're giving your client a bill that's going to be open-ended when a client hears your hourly rate Let's say you're trying to make $80 an hour uh, if you're just telling them this is my rate and uh, I'm gonna try to get your project done in X amount of hours Well, you're still kind of leaving that bill open-ended clients really like to hear hard numbers They like to know exactly what they're gonna pay and they should always be notified if it's gonna cost more than that so the first thing is I feel like you should always be able to give your clients a solid answer, especially if it's a smaller project. Now, if you're working on something bigger, something that's more open-ended, that makes sense, but you should try to narrow that down and make that specific. And I also feel like if you're freelancing, you should have that ability. That's a skill that you need to pick up. I know it's really hard to estimate timelines and projects, but that's something that as a freelance developer, you should have the ability to do. And if you don't know how to do that, I feel like it shows a lack of inexperience and uh, there's really no reason to why you shouldn't be able to at least estimate a specific timeline for a project and a specific budget. It's something that kind of comes with the nature of the business. It's something that you should be able to do. So that's where I feel like a project based approach gives your clients more confidence in you, in what they're going to pay and they actually know what to expect. Now, I've done consulting work and I've done work on the side where I've helped out with a specific project. In that case, that's where an hourly approach does work because it's an open-ended project. And at that point, I can just tell the client, okay, uh, this is what I'm gonna charge to help out. Maybe if I built out a project and I charge them $5,000, I can still give an hourly rate and say my rate is $80 an hour to assist with work on top of that. So in that case, that's where I feel like charging an hourly rate still works. But for the most part, I feel like you need to give that solid answer. Now, the project-based approach and pricing, this is where things also get a little bit tricky and I feel like every freelancer has experienced this where we give a client a price because this can be can be actually pretty hard to do. You give a client a price and you just kind of get ghosted for, for some time and it takes forever to actually get a response and when you do, it's usually a no. And the biggest reason why I saw this is two things. I feel like one, you didn't give your client the options and two, they had a certain expectation. One of the bigger uh, common occurrences for this was because the client that I'm working with got referred by another client. So what happens is uh, client A, let's say this is a plumber, got charged $2,000 for website. Let's say I built out a website for $2,000 and that was a static website for five pages, a contact form and a simple, uh, basically a business website. Now, client A tells client B about me, refers me, and now says, hey, this person charged me $2,000 for the website and that's their price. So client B now, that's a construction company, let's say wants uh, a, some kind of social feature. So let's say we have the plumber that has a sat static website and then the construction company that wants uh, a social platform where people can comment, maybe some kind of invoicing system. Now they're expecting a $2,000 website and their website requires more features. So what happens here is once you give them that hard number, they're confused. Why are you charging me $5,000 when uh, my friend here got charged $2,000? So it really throws them off. And this is where anytime I'm pricing per project, the approach that I like to use is to break it down into three different options. There's option one, which is the highest priced, And that's what my goal for this project is. That's like my ideal price. This is what I feel like uh, can deliver the client all of their expectations. Then I go one step further. So let's say I'll go from $5,000 to three and a half thousand and option two now is the site, but minus a few of those key features. And then option number three is that lowest tier and that's that static website. So when a client gets those options thrown to them, when you break it down that way, they now feel like they're in charge of the pricing. They feel like they actually have power over that. And now one of those prices is more inside of their expected uh, expected budget there. So if they were told it's gonna cost $2,000, they see that price of $2,000. And now they wonder, okay, so $2,000 for that, that makes sense because this, the website's pretty simple, but I also want this feature right here. I wanna add on uh, another feature to the website. Now they can see how they start incurring those costs and 
you let them choose. So now rather than getting ghosted, they can at least call you back and negotiate with you. So you're not dealing with that with a the client. There's no surprises. And usually what happens is a client will end up starting with a lower price. I've had clients start with like a mid tier. And then as we go on, they add on a feature like SEO services, maybe an extra plugin and so on. And they end up incurring all the cost of the original site. But it takes time to develop that because nobody likes to pay out all that money right away, especially if they really don't know you, that trust hasn't been established. So giving the clients those options really helped and it changes up the expectations. So uh, one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got was from somebody that was a good salesman and they always told me, tell the client this right here, you can have three options, you can have it done fast, you can have it done right, and you can have it done cheap, but you can only have two of the three options in combination. And this approach, really puts it into perspective for a client because there's clients that want it done cheap. They really, uh, they want it done cheap and they want it done fast. At that point, you have to let them know we're going to sacrifice quality at this point. If they want it done fast and they want it done good, then in that case, the client understands why it's going to be expensive. So again, you're throwing the ball back in their court and clients like to feel like they're in control of that. And along with project-based pricing, something that, also, that I would also do is do like a, a step-by-step pricing to where I would charge them section by section as the project got built out, I would charge a certain part of that. So let's say the project was going to cost $5,000. There would be a thousand dollar down payment when we complete up to section one, two, three here. Let's say we build out the wireframe. Most of the site is functional. The second payment incurs or maybe even break it down by a monthly rate. So breaking it down that way, uh, really helps avoid that hourly rate because when you're doing the hourly rate, just wanted to tie all this back together. Uh, clients don't feel that confident in what you're doing or it can scare them off. So if you can do it successfully that way, I know people have done it, but that's my personal take on it and something that can work as an alternative to that.